What's up guys, Tony with VentureTube here. Did some more modifications to my Hobie Pro Angler 14 and uh, it's, been a, it's been a little while since I uh, did an update. So here's my new setup. Thanks for watching and uh, hope this helps you out. So let's start at the bow of the boat and work our way toward the stern. Uh, obviously I have the trailer. I do have a trailer video so if you haven't seen that, check that out. Uh, this was a really cheap uh, project. It works really well. And uh, I couldn't be more pleased with it. There's still a couple things I want to do, but that, that, that'll be in another video. So we start with the trailer. All I have holding the kayak on the trailer in the front is just a ratchet strap. I have some anchor rope tied to the front handle here, which is in the front hatch that I keep stored in the front hatch. Uh, as you can see, I did a little red paint job on here. Uh, that's plastic dip, so this is completely removable. I wanted to see what it would look like. I thought it would go good with the red trailer, and I, I think it come out pretty good. Let's see what I got in the front hatch. As you can see, I have a lot of goodies, and right here, this is this is what I put on my lid just to help keep uh, the fish cooler when I kept them in here. But I don't use this as a live well anymore. I obviously use it as storage, but I still kept this because, hey, if I keep baits in there, I'm sure this helps to keep the, the temperatures down. I got this bag, and I keep in this bag several different items. This one is a minnow trap. I don't live, I don't fish with live bait very much, but when I do, that's what this is. It's got a little string. Minnow swims in, can't get out, it sinks, it's got holes in it, all you gotta do is bait it with some bread. Pretty self-explanatory stuff. There's a lot of people making these online different ways. I just keep it stored in this little bag here. Not really necessary, but hey, I had the bag, so why not use it? Um, let's see what else we got in here. This is my kayak drift sock. Actually, it's for a boat, but to me, this is not a kayak, this is a boat. Um, I'm not going to undo this. I think this is the 30 inch version. I've, I have a video on this as well. It works really well. I know a lot of you guys use your regular anchor like this one and drag it on the bottom, but I don't really like doing that, especially out here on Conroe because I, I fish the docks most of the time and it's usually in shallow water and I just think that kind of scares the fish, but that's, that's just me. Maybe it doesn't, I don't know, but this works really well and I like it, so. All right, so those two items stay in this bag. Now I also keep, this is my baits. I got soft plastics in here. One side is soft plastics, the other is terminal tackle, hooks, weights, sinkers, all that good stuff. I got some soap, hand sanitizer, that type stuff too. Sunblock is a must in Texas, of course off. And I also keep my trolling motor stored in here as well. And since I shorten it down, it, it works really well for keeping this motor in here. It wasn't, it don't get damaged. I don't have to worry about the prop getting broken. And if you haven't seen my trolling motor video, check it, check it out. It's two parts. And I know that will help you guys out because this little guy, I, I've been on forums and read where people said that this, you know, a trolling motor won't do anything. And really it, it depends on what kind of fishing you're doing guys. If, if you're in the ocean and you're saltwater fishing and it's windy and rough conditions, yeah, most likely that's not going to be enough. But for your small ponds and rivers and lakes and whatnot, it, it works great. So don't let someone's comment uh, keep you from doing something that works really well. And of course, this is just my rope that I said earlier tied to the, the bow of the boat. That's how I launch it. Just push it off, hold the rope, pull it back to the bank. Simple stuff there. This is my kayak flag. Just made out of an old fishing rod. I have a video on that too. It floats. I put a little float on there. This is from a uh, throwable seat cushion. I just cut it and painted it orange. Works just fine. Uh, I have these custom platforms made by Mad Frog Gear. Uh, they give me a little bit more real estate as far as being able to mount stuff or prop my legs up or you know do anything I want it leaves my options open I really I really like these and it tends to protect whatever I put in my rod holders I have two Scotty rod holders I have one here and one placed on the grab rail on on that side I have this is my umbrella that I use for shade that I use for rain and it is also my sail 
Now, I'm not going to set it up. It's pretty easy to set up, but I have a video on that too. And guys, it works amazingly well. Really, really well. Real simple build, really cheap. Definitely check that video out. Uh, I have a hummingbird fish finder. It swivels in every direction. Really no need to have it on a ram mount of any sort. Sorry about the noise, guys. This is the Hummingbird 788CI. It doesn't have the side imaging, but I, I don't care anything about side imaging, honestly. I care more about this than I would side imaging. This is a very important tool. Uh, a marker is a must if you're fishing deep water. You must have a reference, get you one of these. Every fisherman, no matter what you're fishing in, a kayak, boat, canoe, whatever, get you one of these. Now in this hatch here, I don't store bait. This is where my trolling battery goes. I never remove it. I have it wired into a water, uh, waterproof uh, automotive plug that runs to my uh, switches here. This switch uh, cluster came from Academy. I think it ran about 20 bucks or so, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, I'm not sure. But each individual toggle has its own fuse uh, breaker. It has a protector, so you're good to go. Uh, this one is for my fish finder. Uh, this one is for lights for night fishing. I have lights up underneath here. They're blue. You probably can't see that. Um, this one is for my uh, stern light. And this one I have open right now. So I haven't, I'm not using this switch for anything at the moment. Uh, but in here I got, a, I got the tool to change the prop on the motor in case something happens. Uh, this is some fly line tippet, some leader fly line uh, tippet and leader, sorry. Keep a flashlight and this guy right here. Now, if you fish like I do around docks, big open water and usually it's always windy, um, but you wanna fish by a dock, this thing works wonderful. It's just a brush gripper. You can hook it to a tree, you can hook it to a dock, you can hook it to a stump coming out of the water or under the water and it's a real, real quick uh, anchor and it, it's, it's really cheap and it works really, really well. So uh, also purchased this from Academy. All right, so that's that. Um, let's see, on this side, I just have a little waterproof case. I got a little stereo deal in there. Uh, I put my wallet, keys, cell phone, whatever. Uh, got a pair of pliers and a Leatherman in there. I just keep right there. Um, Let's just work our way down. Of course, got to have your PFD. My chair, I want to show you guys something on the Pro Angler. Uh, the Pro Angler comes from the factory with plastic clips right here. And if you're a bigger person like I am, a lot of times they'll bend or break. And that's what happened to, to me. So all I did was um, find the position that best suited me because I never adjusted it once I got it set, that was it. I put, you know, that, I kept it. I never adjusted it. That was fine for me. So I got it where it felt good to me, and I just took some uh, fishing braid, like 80-pound fishing braid, and just sewed it. Now, I'm no seamstress, but it's been like this for a good while now, and no signs of it coming apart at all. And just got a stainless steel clip here, and it works just fine. It's very strong. All right, let's go to the back here. This is my... This is what I use to keep my fish in, or if I want to pack a picnic or, or whatever. I got a, just a, this cooler I actually found on the side of the road, cleaned it up, and I got a little dip net on the inside. Of course, it's got a bilge pump, pumps up water from the scup scupper holes, and it drains out this side. You can um, change your water level on the inside by switching these two PVC caps. Uh, if I was to redo this, I would make it a little bit different design, but it, it, it still works. Keeps my fish alive. It, it works really well. And I got a battery box mounted here with running a 6 volt battery on that pump instead of a 12, so it's not too powerful uh, and agitate the fish. And when my chair is completely reclined back, it does not touch the battery at all. So not a problem there. I also have a knife just for cutting bait on top of the cooler or for whatever I need it. It's bungee to the kayak. Uh, let's see, all right, this is my PVC rod holder uh, I built. I've had this on there for a while and it works great. And when I put the cooler 
Uh, the fish cooler back on, I had to extend it with this joint here to compensate for the extra width. But I keep my net back here. Generally, I have about four rods with me, uh, two bait casters and two spin, uh, spinning reels, uh, two for trolling. Uh, also, you can see I have my deep water anchor. I keep it stored back here. Uh, the rear hatch, just like most people, I, I, I don't use it. It's too hard to get to. I have a first aid kit that I keep in there. And that's about it. I have a stern light. And the stern light connection, just like you would a regular boat. I like that. Uh, on this side, I have a anchor trolley. I have a anchor cleat. I have some paracord just wrapped around this bar just in case I need to wrap it around a cleat on a boat dock just to tie off really fast without having to hold on to it. And let's go to the other side. Um, I got a little zinger. I keep chapstick, nail clippers, and you must have a whistle. Um, I have a little fish, uh, fish gills floating sunglass holder, but it's strapped to my, sh to my uh, chair strap, so it's not going anywhere. I keep my sunglasses in there. My paddle, I don't fold it up. I just strap it to the side of my kayak right here with these suction cups. I run a bungee around it, let it hang off the side, and also the leash is attached to the, to the grab rail just in case these bungees were to fail. At least I won't lose my paddle. And like I stated earlier, there's my other Scotty rod mount. And... Let's see, I think that's just about going to wrap it up. Also did a little paint job back here. Like I said, this was Plasti Dev. You can see it's kind of peeling some there, but I just want to get an idea of what it looked like. Sorry about the noise, guys, if you can hear that. Um, here's a little pull noodle that I put on the back because I always seem to be running into stuff, so I figured that might help. And you can see I hadn't went over this pole. This is my homemade uh, stakeout pole. Uh, that I have clipped in here. I'm not going to go over it too much just because of the fact that I may be selling those depending on you guys. If I get a lot of feedback then I will definitely look into to maybe building these and selling them. I've seen a lot of people building them online and I had to cut the camera off there for a little while. It was um, it was extremely loud. Anyway Anyway, this is my uh, homemade stakeout pole. It is an eight foot, two inch fiberglass rod. And it has, uh, you can use it as a push pole, you can use it as a camera mount. Uh, it, it's gonna come with everything you need and it's gonna be a lot cheaper than what's out there if I can make it cheap. That's, that's the only thing. So, and I know I can make it cheap, it's the shipping. And I wanna help you guys out. I, I like saving people money. I try to do it myself, so. There's no need to spend a lot of money on something so simple. I know a lot of guys are, are making them out of uh, wood and, and PVC because the fiberglass is so, is so expensive, but uh, I've come up with a way to do this and this is gonna last a lot longer. It's flexible, it's very strong. And like I said, most, uh, most of all, most importantly, it's gonna be cheaper. For example, the Yak Attack Park and Pole is a great product, um, but it's, it's listed as $79 on their website, plus you pay $20 or so for shipping. And that, that's pretty steep. And I can see why people don't want to pay that much for something like that. But these things are awesome on the water. Uh, you, you, you need one. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. The, you can't go wrong buying one of these. And the eight foot length is the best way to go, in my opinion. Um, and I believe that's why a lot of these manufacturers that are making these are going with the eight foot uh, poles. You guys leave me a comment if you're interested. Uh, I'll put my email address in the, in the description below. And if I get a lot of feedback from this, I'm really excited about getting these out to you guys and building more and uh, experimenting with it and see what's gonna work best and, and, and get it maybe even half the price of what's out there. And you're gonna have something that's gonna last you a long time and that's gonna hold up with bad conditions and rough conditions and really be a great product and that, that that makes me feel good to help you guys out so anyway this is my setup hope you guys enjoyed it hope this helps you out this cooler this cooler is awesome 
if I catch fish and don't feel like cleaning them, I leave them in the cooler. I have a video on that as well. Check that out. But the trailer is what made this possible. There was no way I could get this kayak out of the water with this, with this cooler full of water and fish and, and load it in the back of my truck. But with the trailer, it makes it all possible. It's a great rig. It's a great setup. I've caught a lot of fish out of it and I've saved a lot of money. So once again, guys, I appreciate your comments. I appreciate you subscribing and your, all your support. And I look forward to the future. Thanks for watching.